iHarp is a social project with the mission of improving the quality of life with people with disabilities through music. And as someone who doesn't have disabilities, uh, where did the idea come from to create iHarp? The idea came uh, back on 2008 when a friend of mine, uh, which uh, is a musician, and we were rehearsing for our first uh, concert together, had a motorbike accident. So that's when um, I thought what happens to the people that cannot play music with their arms. So, yeah, I started investigating to see if there is something there. And I found out that although there was nothing out there, uh, it would be feasible. And I think, you know, Zacharias, I think that's such a great point that you just referenced. There's nothing out there, <laughs> you know, and before yeah. we even brought you in, we were uh, even uh, talking about it's been 35 to 40,000 years ago is how far we can date back the creation of uh, music through humans. Mm -hmm. And in your opinion, why is it taking this long? Well, <laughs> first of all, uh, only recently the technology permits that. Um, uh, the eye-tracking eye technology is like, uh, well, it's more commonly used the last 20 years, let's say. So first uh, came out programs that uh, allow people controlling the computer, typing with their eyes. So music came a bit later and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be the first one to think about it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's such a true point because, I mean, when you consider, like, let's say the progression of the phonograph to the analog tape machines to now digital recording software, I mean, with the past two decades of rapid innovation in digital technologies, how has the digital era changed music? Mm, yeah, <laughs> I mean, music changed a lot uh, since it was uh, recorded. I mean, just a century ago, you know, you, if you wanted to listen to music, you should listen to live, to, to live music. It's changing even more now with, uh, you know, Spotify and then YouTube and online streaming uh, services. Right. And uh, I think that's such a true point, Zacharias. <laughs> and, you know, and the reason why I'm getting at this is because the advancements in digital technology have led to a monumental shift in most aspects of creating music. Exactly, yes. And iHarp is programmed to play 25 musical instruments. And what do you say to the traditional musicians who are still skeptical about digital instruments? Well, I think that the digital music is a tool that i mean you can use it uh, for if your taste is good i mean if you use it the right way you, you know no nobody uh, prevents you from using also conventional and musical instruments at the same time i mean everything serves a different purpose or sometimes right. maybe the same so uh we should be open to new things and uh, <laughs> yeah, do you ever get any kind of pushback <laughs> of people that kind of see your iHeart? Because I'm sure when yeah, I, when we yeah, all watch yeah, the, yeah. the live yeah. performance, how could you not get chills from the top of your spine all the way down to your feet when you see people with disabilities or even quadriplegic people being able to play in front of a large crowd? I've never played in front of a crowd of a thousand people. <laughs> so the fact that this individual is like mm. killing it on stage that the way that they're doing today, I truly have so much high pressure prize for you Zacharias what you're doing you are a god saint to this world and I got so I, I'm in awe of you my man <laughs> you know I, I think you are such an incredible individual and I was kind of telling the CCS family before you even jumped on that I was a self-taught musician and I believe in the power of music to being very therapeutic and from your experience how life-changing has it been for you and to those who are playing iHeart today well, um, the strongest moments are when we are on stage, as you mentioned, playing, playing, for example, in the grand, uh, in the grand theater of Liceo at Barcelona in front of three thousand people. Wow! Uh, the applause, you know, that my student got, like it, he was uh, back then, twelve-year-old kid that just had lessons, music lessons for two years with the iHarp. I mean, the wow. joy and the and the ability, you know, having such a such a um, serious uh, disability, motor disability, quadriplegia, and being able to to be included. So we are talking about inclusivity and uh, to play with other musicians. I mean, 
yeah, he was very happy, very emotional, and I was also with him because you know. We're yeah, how is and that? I, and I, well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go for it, Marissa. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, I love what you have. Um, the first time I heard about this, you know, Chris had brought it for a what's good, and we're so thankful for you to come on. But like I said, I feel like how are you making this accessible? to more people in the world like what are you doing because it's such a, it's so brilliant and what we can't understand is why someone like musk hasn't jumped on with you or someone or with a lot McCartney. of funding <laughs> to make this happen because microsoft if, apple if Facebook. i had anybody in my family that wasn't able to play because of a loss of a limb right and they're able to create something through this i would want this and i know you can you can get yeah. it but how are you making it accessible like what what are you doing for iheart or I harp doing, should I say? Oh, what can the CCS <laughs> family do to get involved? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, look, what you're already doing right now is important. So we have to let people know that this exists. And uh, all these 10 years that I have been on the project, from since the idea, the implementation, the concerts, the classes with the students, now we're at the point that we have the material to demonstrate that this is possible and to demonstrate that you know, it's not a toy. It's a musical instrument that can be played like other musical instruments. Yeah. So we have shown that people can play music with the rice at a high level. So now people start believing in us. And of course, we would like any collaboration with big names that can make us do it better. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling you out, Microsoft and <laughs> Apple. I'm calling yeah, yeah. you out, Elon yeah. Musk and, you know, Mark Zuckerberg. This is already a fascinating tool. Forget the Neuralink. Let's get iHarp on board. I mean, you know, and, and what do you say to those critics? Because I don't know how it's like in the European landscape, but I know there's an attack on music when it comes to the arts and the high school level and the junior high level so for the critics out there who argue that music programs in schools can detract from academia or hinder a student's learning what do you say to those individuals i mean the music is uh, is beauty is a uh, is a nice it has a therapeutic effects uh, psychotherapeutic effects on the individuals it uh, it brings us to, it brings us together and moreover uh, musicians are found to have uh, better cognitive skills in general uh, um, so music is an, is a very fascinating game a world that uh, that makes us better better persons better more skilled persons uh, brings us together. I mean, uh, music has been with us for uh, from the very beginning of the humanity, and uh, yeah. we need music. <laughs> hey, so and you know, true. And I know Zacharias that you know we're in the middle of COVID, but we do got European listeners out there today. Are there any plans for iHarp to be hosting any kind of live concerts in the future anytime soon? Uh, there will be a concert in Seville, in Sevilla, where I don't know how. You know, in Spain, in the south cool. of Spain, this will be around the end of, well, in about, let's say, less than one month. I think that is so March. cool. Someone buy yeah. me a ticket to Spain. So yeah, I right, right. <laughs> I'm waiting, you know. Come on, but, I, got, but, I got my vaccine but, you know, passport. Let's go. But then again, <laughs> if you had the money to buy, you know, co-host Marissa Pitts a ticket to Spain, I'd rather have you use that money to go donate towards um, I know Marissa might, I know Marissa might gripe with that statement, but I, you know, I truly believe in the power of music. I am, in, uh, I'm just, you know, just the fact that you've, you've made this happen, Zacharias, to join us live on the Chris Collins Show Millennial Talk Show means the world to me and all the other musicians that are tuning in live today. And I hope that this project sets the milestone for decades to come. You are phenomenal phenomenal man you are a genius <laughs> you are a genius i hope you know that and don't ever stop pursuing this project my man because this is such an incredible tool and i want to say thank you again for joining the chris college show millennial talk show yes thank you so much thank you so much for having me here you're doing a very good job and let's keep in touch. Let's do I'll do everything I can in the power of the Chris Collins show to keep amplifying this voice and making this thing more global on a grand scale. You're amazing, my friend, and enjoy the weekend.